All right, guys, let's get into our Sunday matchups for November 27th. Let's get some NFL action. Bengals versus Titans will be our first game. Bengals are minus two and a half. The over under is set at 43 and a half. Trey, I want to hear from you first. I want to hear some trends. This game was probably the hardest one for me to decide on because the trends for one team were so good, but my gut was saying they're not going to win, but I can't go against the trends because I do have some faith in them. I'm going to go Tennessee Titans plus two and a half. <laughs> the Titans are eight and O ATS in their last eight games overall. The Titans are six and O ATS in their last six games versus AFC opponents. The Titans are six and two ATS in their last eight home games. And the underdog in this matchup is 5-1 and one ATS in their last six meetings. So I'm going to go Titans plus the points. I think that they should win this game, so I'm going to go money line as well. Dang. I, I had Bengals marked down. Um, this is such a tough matchup to uh, pick a side. Uh, both teams have been really great, as you said, against the spread. So I'm not too confident in either side here. I'm just going to take the over. When I'm not confident in a pick, I'll just take points. Everybody loves points. Root for points. So I'll take the over 43 and a half. Teats? Shit. Well, you know what? Uh -oh. I'm going to have to contradict you, Bear. I'm oh, taking the no. under. And I was hoping that I didn't have to go against anyone in this, but I'm taking the under. Uh, that Titans defense can be very stifling. That Bengals defense can be good, but also that Bengals defense can also not score for whatever reason on offense. And the Titans also, both, like, both teams do not have an offense that is consistently good. I do have to say the Titans are probably one of the more underrated teams in the NFL right now. They have been doing pretty well with whoever they have under center. Um, I like the Titans to win this game. I don't want to touch it, though. I'm going to stick with the under because I think that this is going to be a, a struggle fest for sure. A rock fight. All right. Well, you have the under. I have the over. And Trey is on the Titans spread and money line. Let's move on to our next matchup. We have the Bears versus the Jets. The Jets are minus 60. Over under is 38 and a half. I'm going to go ahead and start with this one. You guys may or may not have heard about a coin, a very famous coin out there. Uh, it's been flipped 17 times for every game the Jets have played. Um, so far, the coin is 11-0 straight up picking Jets games. So the coin this week has a Bears win against the Jets. So I'm going to go Bears money line. I'm going with the coin. Bears money line to keep it to keep the streak alive. Twelve and zero for the coin. Teets, you know Zach Wilson, you know saying that it wasn't his fault that they lost against the Patriots. They did not let the defense down. Got himself benched, and honestly, I'm kind of surprised that Joe Flacco is not back under center after how he started off the season. I I wrote down before I knew any information like strongly about anything, and I it was a gut feeling. I'm sticking with it. I'm taking the over of 38 and a half. I know the Jets can score, and we've seen the Bears score a lot of points. The Bears have almost scored 38 points by themselves the past couple weeks, or at least two of the past three weeks. I think that after watching the Jets' offense last week, I want to puke, mm. but 38 and a half points in the NFL really isn't a lot of points. Right. We're talking a 20 to 19 football game. Yeah. I mean, the kicker for who, what, Tyler Bass, is that who is the Buffalo yeah. Bills kicker? He had 18 points by himself, not, you know, today because, <laughs> or uh, week, Thanksgiving, but yeah, last week. I, I think that the over is very, very doable. That's a really low number. I think that with whatever we're looking at, I think over can hit. All right. So over 38 and a half, I have Bears money line. Trey, let's hear it from you. Whenever Teets' gut and Trey's trends are on the wow. same side, you know it's going to hit. I'm going to go over 38 and a half. The over is 5-0 and oh in the Bears' last five games overall. The over is 4-0 and oh in the Bears' last four road games. And the over is 5-1 and one, uh, with the Bears' last six teams versus a, games versus a winning record. So the Bears' offense loves to show up versus good teams and, and, and good defenses. Um, Justin Fields is questionable. We don't know if he's going to play yet. If he does, this should hit easily. If not, I I have faith in the Bears running game that they score 20 points still. So I'm going to go over 38 and a half. All right, two overs in the Bears money line. Let's Love. get on to the Rams versus the Chiefs. Chiefs are minus 15 and a half, a huge number for the NFL. The over under is 42 and a half. Teeth, I'll start with you. You know, it's a it's it's a weird line, honestly, because. The Chiefs are a team that they they dig in, they win games, but
but they can win games by one point in overtime. They can win games by 21. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, you never know what you're going to get from week to week. I know that Stafford's banged up and obviously Cooper Cup's out for an indefinite amount of time. So the Rams offense is not looking great. But 15 and a half is scary. I'm going back with the over on this one. I think that 42 and a half is very doable for either offense. Um, I might be living in the past because the Rams offense hasn't been great. But I think that the Chiefs offense and the Rams offense combined, I think they could score up to 50. Okay, over 42 and a half. Um, The Rams are hot trash. Uh, They don't have Stafford. They don't have Cup. The starting quarterback for the Rams is Bryce Perkins. I like Bryce Perkins. He was good at uh, Virginia, but he's just not an NFL quarterback. Um, Rams stay in games with the defense, and I think Patrick Mahomes is going to kill the defense's spirits early in this game. I hope the Chiefs can score your 42 and a, uh, 42 and a half, so 43 by themselves, because I don't <laughs> think the Rams are going to get past midfield. So I'm going to take the Chiefs minus the 15 and a half, and hopefully Mahomes and company can put up 50 for you. Trey? I agree with you, Bear. The Rams are hot trash. I'm going to go under 42 and a half. Um, I think that the Rams will struggle to even hit double digits this game. Uh, Cup out, Stafford out. Their offense is abysmal. They just cut Daryl Henderson, so their running game should be garbage too. The under is 5-1 and one in the Chiefs' last six home games. The under is 4-1 and one in the Rams' last five road games. The under is 4-1 and one in the Rams' last five games versus a team with a winning record. So you can say all you want about them having good defensive players, but whenever good teams travel with the Rams, the Rams get slaughtered. So I'm going to go under 42 and a half. All right. So under 42 and a half, over 42 and a half, and the Chiefs minus 15 and a half. Let's move on to our last game of the day Sunday night football Packers versus the Eagles. The Eagles are minus six and a half. The over under is 46 and a half. Trey, let's hear from you. We all know where Tita's going, so we can save him for last. He's the Eagles lover in the group, um, and they've burned him the last few times. But I'm going to go with the over 46.5. The over is 4-0 and in the Eagles' last four home games. The over is 4-1 and in the Eagles' last five games overall. And the over is 4-1 and in the Packers' last five games in November. The Packers' offense was struggling to begin the season, but the last month of November, their offense has been humming. So I'm going to go over 46.5 for my pick. All right. Um, I'm going to continue to say it until the Eagles prove it. They are frauds. They are the biggest frauds in the NFL. They give me 2020 Pittsburgh Steelers vibes. <laughs> um, Nick Sirianni looked like he won the Super Bowl when they beat the Colts by one. So Patrick Beverly uh, vibes. I, I hate the Eagles, but I also hate the Packers. They stink as well. But I'm going to take the Packers plus six and a half just because I hate the Eagles more and they're frauds. And they shouldn't be celebrating a one point win against the Colts, who are terrible as well. Teets? Guys, I think you're going to need to start looking around locally for any, like, psych words for me. Um, <laughs> maybe, like, someone needs to come over and see if I need some help. Maybe someone has, like, something against me over here. I don't know. But I, I've got, like, the Philly syndrome, like, Philadelphia version of the Stockholm syndrome. I'm going Philly minus six and a half. Oh, no. I, it, <laughs> there's no reason Disgusting. for Disgusting. It. it is disgusting. It hurts. The Eagles have been not, not good recently. Um, I mean, they've been good. It's not good ATS. Right, right. Not, not, against, not good against the spread at all. <laughs> it's just hard for me t- to not ride with them still. I like everything that I see on their offense. The defense has picked up a couple of D linemen that uh, mm-hmm. should help their run game out pretty well and also get some rushes in on a good old Aaron Rodgers. But, yeah, you know, they've they've literally killed me every week since the NFL season started. So <laughs> minus six and a half. Teets, I think you should just take that money you're going to bet on the Eagles and donate it to charity because you're going to lose yeah. that. So um, if you guys want to, if you guys want to give me a charity to donate that money to that one unit, I'd probably throw on this game. Go ahead and drop that below. So I could bet it on the Packers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, that'll do it for our Sunday games. If you enjoy the content, please be sure to drop a like and share with a friend. Subscribe below. Thanks guys. See you next time.